the best reason there is for making a remake is that they're going to blow open the scope of the film. Like you've got the, you know, obvious crowds all gathered in a sound stage in Blade Runner, right? Mm-hmm. Like obviously a sound stage. And then if you do a remake, you're able to blow that world open where they can go anywhere and do anything, right? So it just opens the world up, you know, opens the scope of the world up. That's the movie that they're, that's the one I was trying to remember. That's the one that oh, they're Blade doing Runner. a sequel. Blade Runner? Yeah. Yeah, with Ford, isn't that's it? That's right. right. Harrison Ford is going to be in it. So you'll be able to see if they can blow out the scope. Right. And they won't see the, the car come down on a forklift. <laughs> <laughs> right. Or just, like, you know, at the time watching Blade Runner, it was an amazing kind of world. But when you look at it, it's just obviously, you know, a sound stage. And I'll t- I'll talk about it later because I'm gonna when when I well I might as well segue now because uh, that's the seems to me that's what they do that's the benefit of of when they remade Total Recall is they were able to make this world uh, the world is very interesting to me in the in the Total Recall make a uh, remake you know they 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 make the whole city that he lives in and you can you know when they're doing the chase scenes you can see him. And it's all very futuristic and it's, it's buildings piled upon top of buildings. And, you know, it's a, it's a more interesting world that he lives in, but whether or not it's an interesting character or, uh, you know, or a plot is a different question. Did, did you, did you like the second one? The, my, my first feeling was when I watched uh, the original again in preparation of this podcast is that they just don't make movies that clever anymore. You know what I mean? You think so? You, you think the first one was clever? The first one was clever. It was very clever. Like um, to me, the idea of a good Total Recall film is how much it adheres to that kind of you know Philip K. Dickish mindfuck thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like paranoia and is this real? Is this fake? You know, that to me is the essence of Total Recall. And in the original, I thought they really played with it very well. They kind of rode that line. Is he really a secret agent or is he strapped to a chair in recall and something's fucked up and he's, you know, stuck there? Mm-hmm. He's dreaming it all. For an example, it starts off, he's a construction worker and he's married to Sharon Stone. And uh, he's just going through his day. But when he talks to his wife and leaves, she looks at him. There's a look. Or when he's talking with his construction worker, he's like, I'm thinking of going to recall and get one of those memories implanted. The guy goes, you shouldn't do that. And then Quaid leaves and the guy kind of looks at him. The people that are around him are suspicious. If it was just a guy who was a construction worker, there wouldn't be any of that. So they kind of hint that, you know, maybe he really is a spy who's being checked. When he goes to uh, recall, they do stuff like, because in the uh, first part where he's, uh, again, where he's just a construction worker, he's kind of obsessed with Mars. So again, there's a thing where n- not all of this has happened before he's gone to recall, right? Because rec- when he goes to recall and gets those memories implanted, that's the trigger that, you know, all of a sudden the plot gets going. And it's like, they're, they're showing him pictures of Mars and you see the, you see the uh, artifacts and he sees Cohagen, the, I guess the governor of Mars. The, he sees the girl that he, he eventually meets. Like they show him all the shit that's going to happen you know, after the plot gets started and then and like he goes to Mars and he sees these people, he sees the artifacts, he knows Cohagen. So I think they really do a good job of, of setting that up. They put all the things in place where you'll wonder, is it real? Is he a super spy? Is he just a guy who's still, you know, trapped in his fantasies? You know, it's, to me, it was interesting. They play with that well. That came in, what, 83? It was 89. No, wait, it was 90. The original was 1990. Really? That late? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I when it came out, I guess I had an idea of who Arnold Schwarzenegger was and what his movies were like. Of course. And yeah. when I saw that, I didn't like it. I didn't like him in it. I didn't like the movie. I still, you know, the last time I tried to watch it, I couldn't watch it. I did watch the Colin Farrell one. <clears throat> yep. And I loved it. I thought it was a lot of fun. Right. You know, I thought it was well executed, and it reminded me a lot of Blade Runner. Right. Well, another thing I thought when I uh, started watching it was, um, it really sucks that Paul Verhoeven still isn't making movies. Yeah, who's who's that? He's the director, uh, Paul Verhoeven. He was on t- he was on top of the world in the uh, late '80s, early '90s. So he directed RoboCop, 
Oh, okay. Right. He did Total Recall, and he did Basic Instinct, and those were huge hits. You know, and that puts you right in the A list for directors, mm-hmm. right? And the unfortunate thing is, after that, he did Showgirls. 